hello and welcome to today's YouTube video. Today is the second game in my tournament that I played on Monday two days ago, and today's game is absolutely crazy. Uh, this game could honestly be featured on a Gotham Chess episode. I mean, this is an absolutely crazy game that I it's hard to explain. I'm just going to show you d4, knight f6, and I'm playing the Jabava London. Big surprise, d5, bishop f4, c6, e3, and my opponent chooses g6, and I go h4. Now my opponent uh, tries to stop h5 with h6, which is good. If I go h5, then he just simply goes g5, uh, so I play bishop d3, my opponent plays bishop g7, I play knight to f3, Boom pins it with bishop g4, and I simply go queen to d2. Opponent plays at knight d7, just developing pieces, and I go knight to e5. Um, I'm playing this correctly, to my own surprise, um, and my opponent goes back to e6, which is just a very weird move, because now like your pawns are restricted. Um, it's just a very weird uh, thing. I think maybe he wanted to stop any sacrifices um, on any of these squares, but uh, it, it doesn't work in either of these cases if, if I take here. So, I don't know. Um, so yeah, bishop e6, very weird move, kind of gets him a cramped position, and I simply castle long here. My opponent plays knight to f8. Um, I honestly can't explain that move to you. I, it's out of my pay grade to explain what this move does. Maybe he wants to put his bishop on one of these two squares. Knight on h8 doesn't really do anything. Um, yeah, I can't explain that one. Anyways, I play king to b1, the top engine move on the computer um, after you let it run for a while, which is quite nice. And my opponent plays queen to a5. Now, this position was quite insane. Because at first, I was calculating e4. And I was gonna go for e4. Um, I mean, it, it makes total sense, opening up the center. I'm castled, my king is very safe. He's uncastled. Um, I feel like e4 is a very principled move here. But I calculated for like five minutes and all of a sudden, my brain just found knight b5. It's inaccurate, apparently, but the valuation is actually the same as like the top move, so I don't know why I call this inaccurate. Um, now this is a very, very tactical move. Obviously, he can't take or take because then I either take his queen or take his queen. Um, so yeah, if he takes my queen, then I give a check. He has to go here. Then I give a check here, and then I take. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Um, and that that's already just good for me. But um, after queen to b6, I have another threat in this position because he is defending this check still. But I have discovery. Knight takes c6 brilliancy sacrificing both knights um but it just works the tactics work out um i'm kind of proud of this move um even though it's slightly inaccurate but uh yeah i got a brilliancy for it so can't be that bad my opponent plays 94 here now i don't know what i'm doing here i got into my own head um i i made such a bad move here but yeah, I, I really got into my own head. I was calculating queen before. And I'm just like, okay, threatening mate. If queen takes, then I just give a check. Um, and I, I'm winning. Um, queen a5 is also very strong. Because if it takes, then I save my knights. And But I was, I was scared of this fork. I was simply scared of my rooks getting forked. Can you really, like, be mad at that? So I played queen e2. 
this is where it starts to get crazy. Now, some of you, some of you may already see what the problem is with Queenie 2. Um, but I got in my own head. And I'm like, okay, I already have like this tactic on lock. Like I'm it's on lock. He, he cannot stop it. So why don't I just play a simple move that just keeps everything I already have. B takes c6, knight to c7 check for king of the king and the rook, king to d7, and knight takes a8, hitting the queen. Some of you may see the problem here, some of you may not. That's okay. I didn't see it either. Queen b7. Oh, come on, computer, you're gonna give it away. Shh. But in this position, I should have simply just taken the knight. Because then it's a trade if takes takes. And I, I can just get my knight out this way now. Oh boy. Knight c7. Trying to excavate my knight. And I just completely missed knight c3 check. I was devastated. I was like sitting there for like four minutes. I'm just like, should I resign? I feel like I should resign. But then I'm like, there's still like 20 minutes on the clock for each player. So I'm, I'm, I'm either just gonna have to wait doing nothing or I can just play this out. And I chose to play it out. Knight takes e2. Bishop takes e2. Bishop to f5, hitting my pawn. Knight a6, threatening his queen. Knight e6, protecting the square and hitting my bishop. Bishop g3. Bishop takes c2, which I actually think is inaccurate. Rook c1. Bishop a4. Knight to c5 uh, check, knight takes, rook takes. And here is where my opponent starts to go wrong. Bishop b5. Now, some of you may be like, the heck, doesn't that just blunder everything he has? Almost. After you calculate, bishop takes, c takes, you may be like, okay, just win the queen. It's, it's a fork, right? Yeah, you're kind of right. Except if you calculate it, rook c7, queen takes c7, bishop takes c7, queen takes c7. I have a single rook, and my opponent has a rook and a bishop. I'm down a piece. Now, would I rather be down a piece or down a rook for a queen? I would rather have the queen or, or the rook for the queen, because then at least it's three pieces to three pieces. So I play the top engine move. Rook h, c1, taking control of the only open file on the board. My opponent goes a little bit crazy here, but I understand it. Uh, king e6, it's a very complicated position actually. Um, yeah, my opponent is, uh, I thought this was the correct move, this is the correct move, but you have to play very accurately here in order to not get checkmated. Rook c6, check, king f5. And this is where I start the weave the net. After I play f3, the king is in stalemate. That's very important. I'm starting to weave the net and I'm starting to enjoy the position a little bit more. e6, blunder. Positions already equal. Rook c7. There's only one move in this position. Rook to b8. Only move. I don't know how a person plays that move if they're sane, not cheating. Um, but yeah, opponent plays queen a8, understandably. And in this position, I have forced checkmate after rook takes f7 bishop f6 
bishop e5. If he moves any of the pawns, I simply just take the bishop and it's checkmate. But I calculated his move. I'm like, okay, how do I deal with that move? And then I'm like, I created this net with f3. And f3 supports something. So after rook f8, I have a very beautiful checkmate with a pawn. e4 is checkmate as well. e4 is checkmate. Um, g4. g4 checkmate down a queen. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why you do not resign. I don't know how I came back from this position, um, but you may as well see that for my opponent in tomorrow's game. I mean, stay tuned for that one. That is the game that probably made me the angriest, like out of all my chess experience, that game made me the angriest like, out of the three years I've been playing. That After that game, I was probably the angriest I've ever been after a chess game. Uh, yeah. Anyways, for this game, accuracies. I had an accuracy of 86.3. I don't know how. I literally blundered a queen and like blundered advantage so many times with the tactics there. The tactics did work out, but I just didn't follow them through right. Um, and my opponent had an accuracy of 72.2, which, yeah, I understand that. He kind of threw his giant advantage, which makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I had an estimated rating of 22.50. My opponent had an estimated rating of 1,800. Uh, so yeah, good game. Um, it was definitely not, you know, a perfect game by either side. Definitely not perfect at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, absolutely crazy game. This is why you never resign. Even like 1,900 USCF, I mean, that's strong. You have to be a strong player to get to 1,900 USCF. Um... But, but yeah, that is for today's YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed this absolutely insane game. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in tomorrow's video.